Okay. So that's just a very easy way to to kind of explore some strategies that I set up front. There's nothing stopping anyone here from being much more uh, uh, sophisticated with their analysis, uh, adding, adding constraints for budgets and uh, harvest volume constraints, optimi allocation optimizer constraints. So this is a, you know, a very simple uh, uh, perspective in terms of a model, but certainly you can get uh, much more intricate with this, with this information. I also want to just show you very quickly the maps uh, with respect to this. And I can show you the, uh, the harvest schedule with this uh, with this particular strategy. You can quickly look at, well, I want to see where are the, the thin areas and the clear cuts and the heavy thins in the first five years of this particular schedule. So we can quickly graph this uh, particular strategy out there. Now we can see over the next five years where the clear fells and thins and, and heavy thins and light thins are going to be. That's one of the nice things about Woodstock is you can quickly visualize your, your results. So you can look at this. So you can see some, uh, it's just tone in here a little bit, you can see that these are all the different polygons or stands that, that are desired to be optimized or harvested at a particular time to maximize that uh, MPV objective, that present value objective. And all the reds are, everything is harvested in period one, everything green is in period two, and so forth. So but what you can see now right from, the, right from this probably perspective is that this is all great, but in the optimized world it's very hard, very difficult to exert uh, spatial control, and I mean spatial control is like exerting um, constraints around who's around you and what you're, going to, what you're going to harvest with respect to maybe making harvest unit sizes of a certain, certain size that you want, like 10 hectares is a minimum size, 150 hectares is a maximum plane size is, is an example, and that you cannot handle in LP. It's a very difficult problem. So this is where Stanley comes in, and we can now exert some spatial control on this particular plan and start generating a more realistic spatial schedule. And one of the, one of the highlights, and I think you can see in this is an example of some problems, is that if we, if we zoom in on this area right here, this is classic actually, is that most of these polygons, the best time for harvesting that would be in period four. Yet there's a couple of fragments here of stands that are actually, the, the optimizer wanted to choose it in period one. But you know that from a spatial perspective, there's no way you're going to harvest that in period one. They're probably too small. And actually, just zoom on that. Actually, if I just look at the identifier on that, the the area on that is very small. It's it's basically that's uh, square meters the area. So we're looking at essentially 0.8 hectares. You're not going to chase that one stand. Uh, so I zoom out here again, and then probably you might see is an area down in here where you get a little bit of everything going on. It's better to actually probably harvest that all at once. So if you've got these spatial, spatial problems, Stanley can actually correct that for you. And I'm going to just open up Stanley, and I'm going to run that. And essentially what Stanley will do is look at that optimized schedule and try and schedule everything spatially subject to spatial constraints. And it's going to base this on a couple of objectives that I've set up, total revenue and harvest volume. So that's just going to give Stanley its guidance. And I'm going to set up some, some, some rule sets for clear-cut um, action. In this case, I'm saying that Whatever you do, don't schedule anything less than 10 hectares in size. That's just kind of an operational, minimum, minimum operational constraint that we've kind of enforced in our operations. And uh, I'm also going to say that maximum opening constraint is, is 200 hectares. So nothing can be bigger than 200 hectares out there. And also, I have a green up delay. In some folks, this is relevant. In some cases, some cases it's not. Certainly in the southeast USA, where, they're, where they have forest certification constraints, this is a big deal, where they have to allow adjacent stands to grow up at least one or two years or three years before they can cut the uh, stand around it. So they had this kind of delay uh, that has to be enforced, and that causes some impacts. So certainly a spatial constraint that hurts them from a harvest perspective and an MPV perspective. Let's just assume there's a one period green up in this particular place. Also on thins, uh, the minimum harvest size, say this is going to be 20 hectares. They need a little bit bigger opening size. Maximum opening size is 500, going to be bigger than that, and there's no green up delay. So if I run Stanley on this now, what Stanley's going to start doing is trying to schedule this subject to these spatial constraints. And this is, Stanley does not use LP technology. It's using, a, uh, it's using a, a heuristic algorithm, so it's a search algorithm, that'll actually go out there and start uh, trying different solutions using and smart stuff from the algorithm and keep trying to find a good solution with respect to these spatial constraints. And we can see so far, this is the total revenue, and you can see total harvest volume. Uh, if we look at those from a numbers perspective, this is what we were able to, to generate out of the Woodstock optimized section, and this is what we were able to generate or allocate spatially. So there is a, a hit with respect to the spatial cost, and this cost you can see is the difference between the green bars and the yellow bars. 
and we can look at best so far. So I'm doing about 93% of the optimal. So that's what I'm able to achieve. And from a total revenue perspective, it's actually the exact same thing. I need about 93% of the optimal. So let's just stop that and have a look at this particular solution. We can kind of go out here now. We'll save that. And now I can just map what Stanley did. So I can look at the cup periods. So you can see a very different perspective now with respect to the, the spatial schedule of comparing Stanley versus the Woodstock solution. You can see now that all of this was scheduled in the period three. If I look at that again from a scheduled perspective, you can see that the optimally was the best time to do that was in period four. The little fragments was in period one. But Stanley decided to, to group it all into one harvest unit. And that harvest unit, we can actually can we just click on that harvest unit. It's uh, 42 hectares in size. It's S66, scheduled in period three. And it's a clear cut. And uh, you can see that it's determined that the best time to do that from a spatial perspective is in period three. Same thing down here. It threw all of these polygons, all of that into period three as well. I made another harvest unit out of it, 73.2 hectares in size. And once again, if I go back to the schedule, clear that, you can see that it actually scheduled a lot of that in different periods, in period four, in period one, and period two. But from a Stanley perspective, the best thing to do is to group that all into period three. So the whole idea here is that Stanley allows you to very easily, uh, quickly, develop a, a spatial harvest plan or a tactical spatial plan uh, that now can be easily rolled out to other folks in the organization to review and revise and, and send that back up to the model. And that's where, where uh, Greg was referring to in terms of being able to publish this model and get other people engaged in the process. Um, so um, unfortunately, we don't have time to get into that. But the concept is that we could publish this model and send it out for other people to review. So the idea here was to give you an idea of how the Woodstock uh, Stanley allocation system was working. So in the background, I didn't show you the allocation optimizer, but in that background, we're doing the optimization. We've got the whole uh, allocation piece. Uh, we have the Woodstock optimization piece, which is integrated together, and how you can spatially schedule this spatially thereafter with Stanley. And I think that on that, Greg, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap that up on the demonstration piece and, and throw it back to you. So I will make you the presenter again. I, and uh, or can you do that yourself? Yep. OK, good. Just did it. Thanks, Doug. That was great. Um, we're going to launch uh, one, one last poll here before we wrap up. Um, so I'll put that up now. Doug, is that showing on your screen? That's showing on my screen, thanks. OK, great. Yeah, so we're just asking folks, you know, what, what was your reason for attending today's uh, session? And uh, I'll leave it up again for probably another uh, 10 or 15 seconds. Give you folks a chance to click their buttons. Looks like we're got about just about everybody uh, everybody voted here, so I'll close the poll and uh, I'll share the results. So we've got uh, looks like we've got about uh, you know the majority of folks are, are simply just uh, uh, it's out of interest and, and a little bit of education. Uh, perhaps uh, just trying to, for the first time, understand what we do. And I uh, get 25% that uh, they're looking to implement a solution at some point, and 13% are actively looking. So that's, that's pretty good. That's awesome. Thanks for that. OK, so that's, uh, that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, we really appreciate your time today. And uh, you know, certainly, if you have additional questions, you can uh, email them to uh, anyone here at Ramsoft, but probably most appropriately Doug and Doug's email is showing here. Um, we're going to follow up later today with a very short survey. So um, it won't take a lot of your time. It's only a handful of questions. Uh, and that type of feedback is really helpful to us as we continue to, to try to improve these types of sessions and, and make them a bit more relevant and um, a bit easier to, to pull off. Um, as well, uh, I'd like to direct you. I mean, I'm sure you've all been there. But our website, lots of great content, uh, tremendous depth of um, user case studies and success stories there that talk about you know, real life application of our technology. Um, I you know, encourage you to seek those out. And we'll be doing more of these types of sessions um, over the coming months. Um, we're finding them to be very effective in, in just kind of helping share what, what we're doing and how we're doing things, uh, both with our customers and with potential customers. So uh, with that, it uh, looks like we're, we're just about out of time. So I think we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, really appreciate your time today. Again, uh, if you have other questions after this, Feel free to reach out to us. If there are aspects of what you saw today that you'd like to understand better, again, email Doug, and we'd be happy to uh, you know, set up a one-on-one a -on -one phone call or, or even web demonstration of, say, WebSoft Analytics if that's something that you're interested in.